HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Taunton High School for the Division I South sectional semifinals between the 13th seeded Hopkinton Hillers and the first seeded Bridgewater Raynham Trojans. Bridgewater Raynham is 21 and 1. Overall, the Hillers are 16 and 6. Both teams have had to overcome some very tough opponents to get to this sectional semifinals game. It should be a great matchup today. With the Bridgewater Raynham defense, I'll send it to my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad. Good evening, Tom. It's nice to be here. Very excited. Third base, Jenna Marlino. Summer Sharon at shortstop. The second base woman is CC Barron. First base, Riley Swazinski. Left field, Jill Johnson. Center field, Kylie Pache. Right field, Emily Newcomb. Behind the plate, Lexi Silva. And she'll be catching Julia Ferry today and calling balls and strikes. Ray Petrol. And on the base is Frank Pagano. Thank you very much, Larry. And the Hillers lineup consists of Emily Whalen starting things off as she is set to step into the batter's box. And we are set to get underway. Julia Ferry throws the first pitch, and it's up high, one and oh. The batting order is Emily Whalen hitting first, Tara Kester hitting second, Katie Holly hitting third, Jill Seedy, the catcher, batting cleanup. Kristen McCluskey will hit fifth, Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop, will hit sixth. Juliana Cedi, the catcher, hitting seventh, Bill Ansi, the first baseman, hitting eighth, and Jordan Chevary hitting ninth. Up to first base, and it's a three unassisted to start things off here at Taunton High School. Tara Kester will step in. One away for the Hillers. The Hillers, of course, the visiting team here on the neutral site at Taunton High School. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Mike Terosian on camera. And it's a nice evening for some playoff softball. Well, they had Emily Whalen positioned defensively. A little, little homework they did watching our broadcast. They had the second baseman playing in closer than the first baseman did expecting her to bunt. That's exactly what she tried to do is get the ball down the first baseline and uh, first baseman uh, recorded the out. That pitch inside. Tara Kessler hit a 392 on the season. Left fielder in the center fielder playing relatively deep. The right fielder playing in a little shallow. Ferry set to deliver. There's a strike, two and one. Well, Julia Ferry certainly uh, has some velocity on that fastball, Larry. Well, it's going to be a battle of the pitchers. It always is when you get this uh, late in the season. So we'll see what happens. 
Barry set to deal. Swing and a miss, two and two. Tara's brother Ryan playing on the uh, boys varsity baseball team that uh, is going to be playing in the sectional finals tomorrow against the Westwood Wolverines. We'll be there. That's right. Set Ferry deals oh. up high. Full count. Should be a good TVL battle in the South Division II sectional finals for baseball. I think we'll be in the press box. I think so. I don't know if they'll let you in, though. No, that's true. There's strike three. Got her looking. Two away. Ray Tetral, the home plate umpire, was telling me before the game that he used to uh, umpire Division I softball. Umpired for 35 years. Well, I guess we have a, an experienced umpire today. But he wouldn't like to have a third umpire, but. Katie Holly steps in, ferry set to deliver. Up high. Katie running up to uh, slap the ball. Hillers in their away green jerseys today. Bridgewater Raynham in their home white, with the red trim. Ferry deals. And this is up the left side, foul, one and one. This is a neutral site game, supposedly. Uh, I think Bridgewater Raynham's the next town over, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so. Well, Taunton High School is going to have the benefit of playing on their home turf tonight. They'll be playing after this game is through. Of course. Swing and a miss. One and two. Thought there'd be a bigger crowd for Bridgewater Raynham, but it looks like Hopkins is outdrawing the Bridgewater Raynham Trojan crowd. The Hillers faithful have come in big numbers. Swing and a miss. That'll be out number three. We'll head to the bottom of the first. We are scoreless on HCAM. Bottom of the first inning. Bridgewater Raynham coming to the plate. Let's take a look at the Bridgewater Raynham batting order. Leading things off is the center fielder, Kylie Peach. Batting second, the second baseman, CC Barron. Hitting third, the left fielder, Jill Johnson. Summer Sharon, the shortstop, hitting cleanup. Lexi Silva, the catcher, hitting fifth. Julia Ferry, the pitcher, hitting sixth. Emily Newcomb, the right fielder, hitting seventh. Riley Srozinski, the first baseman, hitting eighth. Emma Tapley, the designated player, hitting ninth. With the Hillers' defense, here's Larry Sacklad. At third base, Krista McCluskey. At shortstop, number eight, Alyssa McIntyre. Emily Whalen, the second base woman. At first base, Bella Onsi. Left field, Jordan Chevery. Center field, Katie Hawley. Right field, Megan Sullivan. Behind the plate, Jill Cedia. Catch and assist to Juliana Cedia. First pitch is a strike to Piche. Always going to watch out for those leadoff hitters that tend to lay down a bunt. Lukowski ready to pounce. There's a bunt. Slow roller, foul. 0 oh and 2. Uh, they do have a tendency to bunt those. Lead-off hitters, table setters, if you will. Juliana Cedia has pitched very well in the postseason. Temperature today is reading at 68 degrees from the HCAM Weather Center. A little bit cloudy as this is popped up and caught by Juliana Cedia for out number one. Not a very good bunt. CC Barron, the second baseman, will step in. There will be some wind that factors in this game as well. Bella Anzi could play a little bit deeper at first base there. She's playing even with the bag. Emily Whalen creeping in at second base. I don't know whether they smell bunt or whether Coach Alberry has got any tape on the Trojans. First pitch was up high, one and oh. Hit in the air, left side, and caught by the left fielder, Chevary. Jordan. Two away, that'll bring up Jill Johnson, the left fielder. Let's take a look at the brackets and what both teams had to do to get to this point. The Hopkinton Hillers defeated Milton in the first round, Plymouth North, and then Walpole was 13 to nothing against 
Milton has their strike one. 14 to six over Plymouth North, five to four against Walpole. Bridgewater Raynham had a bye in the preliminary round. They defeated Attleboro in the first round, five to nothing. And then took North Attleboro to nine innings and won that game one to nothing to get to this point. A one and one count on Jill Johnson. So far we've seen the first three hitters sort of run up in the batter's box and try and slap it. Inside, two and one. Our third hitter is rather diminutive in size. Don't know how much power she has. Gets a piece of this, but it's foul out of play. Two and two. We do have the benefit of a good scoreboard today. We do. I think if the Hillers can get out of this inning unscathed, it'll give them a great deal of confidence against this number one seed. That's fouled away. Count is two and two. Not jinxing or anything, but I did watch the infield outfield for both sides, and uh, there didn't appear to be a big major difference, so it may come down to pitching. Cedia just missed. Full count now. Cedia and Ferry. Yeah. Bridgewater Raynham looking for their first base runner of the day. Hit in the air, right field, and it's over the reach of Megan Sullivan. Here goes Johnson over to second. She's going to head over to third, and it's going to be a stand-up triple for the left fielder. A little pop in her bat. They'll bring up Summer Shear in the shortstop and cleanup hitter. Runner on third for the Trojans. Hopkins is going to be aware of a possible bunt play to get that run in. One run just might do it today. Bridgewater Raynham led by head coach Mike Carroza. Hiller is led by head coach Shannon Alberry, who's done a tremendous job in her first year at the helm of the varsity program. A pitch just outside, one and oh. Good take by the Trojan hitter. Showed bunt, pulled back. CD deals, swing and a miss. You know, Tom, her changeup in the last couple days has really been her uh, out pitch, making a lot of batters look silly. Bunt is squared by Sheeran, pulled back and just outside, two and one. The Hillers started off the season just beating the daylights out of teams and then towards the end of the year hit a slide. Squared bunt once again pulled back. Ball three. Three and one count on the cleanup hitter. Runner on third, two outs. There is a strike. That'll fill up the count. Bunt is squared once again. And she'll draw the walk. For those of you that are tuning in a softball, maybe for your first time, you'd see an orange base at first and a white base. The orange base is for the runner and the white base is for the uh, fielder, so there's no stepping on somebody's heel. But they can start their runner stride from either base. Lexi Silva, the catcher, steps in. Runners on the corners, two outs. There's a strike. Jill Seedy has really improved with their blocking and receiving since last year. Juliana Deals hit in the air. Jill going towards it, and she is called off by McCluskey who makes the catch for the third and final out of the first inning. 
to the top of the second we go. We are scoreless on each cam. Top of the second inning, four, five, and six due up for the Hillers. Jill Cd the catcher, Kristen McCluskey, the third baseman, Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop. The dimensions here at Taunton High School, it's 195 to left field, 220 to center, 195 to right field. So not the biggest ballpark. So maybe we'll see a couple Hillers home runs today as not the first pitch is strike yeah. one. Not big enough to hold uh, a ball hit by uh, Jill Cedia as she ended the game against Milton on a walk-off. Just low, one and one. She had five home runs during the regular season. At least one that we know about in the postseason. Very set to deliver. And this is ripped into left field. To the fence it goes. Cedia rounding first, heading over to second. The throw in is not in time. It's a double for Jill Cedia. Legging out the double, Jill Cedia. Kristen McCluskey, the third baseman, set to step in. And there will be a pinch runner for the Hillers. I bet you it's Heather Seval. I'll bet, bet my entire paycheck. No, I owe you all my oh, money. You owe me a paycheck. Carly Stevens. Carly Stevens, the sophomore, into pinch run. Oh, dang. <laughs> that ball was smoked to the gap. Certainly. Got out there in a hurry. Certainly was. I don't think there's many pitchers that Jill Cedia could not get a hit off of. Well, she couldn't get a hit off me. <laughs> Back in your prime? Yeah, back in my day. So you see a bunt to move the runner over to third? I was going to say, she probably couldn't get a hit off you because uh, you can't throw over the plate. That's right. No, I throw overhand to softball. <laughs> <laughs> it's allowed, isn't it? McCluskey is going to bunt here. That is a fair ball up to first base. The throw is in time, but the pinch runner is pushed to third. Great bunt. Is that two to three on the out? Sack bunt there, and Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop, will step in. One out, runner on third for the Hillers. We're see trying if, to draw first blood here. See if Coach Elberry's got the contact play on if Alyssa McIntyre should get a bat on the ball. Called strike. Not a very aggressive uh, lead for Carly Stevens. Alyssa McIntyre hit 343 during the regular season and played 19 games. Fouled away. I'll, I'll be on celebrity sighting lookout for you today. I see one. Very set to deliver the 0-1. And this is hit in the air over to center field, and it's caught. But the runner from third is going to tag and easily score 1-0 Hillers. A sacrifice RBI flyout for Alyssa McIntyre. And the Hillers are on the scoreboard. They draw first blood. That's right. They'll bring up Juliana Cedia, the catcher. Fouled away. Ooh. That was a home run swing yes, there. Yes, it was. Trying to match her sister. Ferry deals up high. One and one. I'm sure Ferry doesn't find herself behind the eight ball that often with a 21 and two record. 21 and one record. Maybe 21 and two by the end of today. Outside. I've learned not to bet against the Hillers. I bet against them against Walpole. You lost your house because of that, yes, right? Yes, I did. It's popped up and it is foul. 
Two and two. The celebrity sightings, we're getting some boys varsity players that'll be... Uh, Coach Simos is here. Yeah, there's uh, his son, Steven. We got Brett McIntyre from the 2017 squad, the great right fielder. Line up in the pitch, outside. Good take by Juliana Cedi. We got Ben McKenzie showing up. We've got Connor Kelly showing up. Everybody from town is showing up. It's a big deal. It is. Count is full. Swing and a miss. Out number three, but not before the Hillers play to run. Hopkinton leading Bridgewater Raynham one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the second on H cam. Bottom of the second inning, a one nothing lead for the Hillers as they strike in the top of the second. Due up for Bridgewater Raynham. It's six, seven, and eight. Julia Ferry, the pitcher to start things off. Emily Newcomb, the right fielder, followed by Riley Strozinski, the first baseman. Juliana Cedia set to deliver. And it's just inside, says the home plate umpire. One and oh. Well, it was a sacrifice RBI flyout by Alyssa McIntyre to score Carly Stevens, who was pinch running for Jill Cedia after Cedia hit a double to put the Hillers on the board. Looks like Ferry was looking for the number one and she got the changeup instead. Juliana set to deal the 1-1. One -one. Fouled away. Juliana can be very, very effective by changing speeds. The one, two, fouled away. Doesn't look like the uh, Trojans have got a lot of mashers on their team. Yeah, I think a lot of their success has been pitching. Yeah, and here's the pitcher right here. And she just stays alive. A very, very defensive swing. Infield playing it straight up. Two strikes, not expecting a bunt. Cedia delivers. Check swing, fouled away. Tempting. Strike zone the same in softball as is, is, is in baseball. That's a little bit of a tongue twister for me. Ball crosses the plate at the knees or at their letters. In the judgment of the umpire, it's a strike. Hit in the air, left side, and it is caught. Nice job by Jordan Chevery. She had to cover a good amount of ground to get to that one. I think she got fooled a little bit. She had to really charge in and got it off her shoestrings. Emily Newcomb, the right fielder, will step in. So far the hardest ball that's been hit today, and not even close. Is by the catcher, Jill Cedia. Cedia deals. Hit in the air to center field, and it is caught by Katie Hawley, two away. Can of corn for Katie Hawley. Riley Srozinski, the first baseman, will step in. Juliana deals, upstairs. I got a great feeling with this umpiring crew, there's gonna be nothing funky going on. Up the left side, picked up by the shortstop, throw to first, not a problem. Six to three, four out number three, and we will head to the top of the third. It's the Hillers leading Bridgewater Raynham, one to nothing on each can. Top of the third inning, a one to nothing lead for the Hillers. Good crowd on hand here today to take in this sectional semifinal, the Division I South sectional semifinals. The winner of this game will go on to take on the winner of the next game that's gonna happen right here at Taunton High School. 
It'll be Taunton and Bishop Fian as Bella Ansi, the first baseman, steps in. Ferry set to deal. Swing and a miss. I thought these uh, games, these sectional semifinals and finals were supposed to be played at neutral sites, so you know what I mean? But uh, evidently Taunton's going to have a home game. This is a site every year for uh No, it doesn't softball, matter. I mean, you can certainly, there are lots of fields that you could play at. You go that, to a different town and borrow one. And actually, looking at the signage here, Taunton won the state championship last season. They have at home field all the time. That's right. Let's see. Looks at mm. ball one there, one and two. Very, very close. They were doing the Stoughton game the other day at Stoughton High. It was supposed to be a neutral site game. There were about oh, 400 yeah. fans from Stoughton. I don't think the baseball team cared very much. Uh, well, no, they spanked them. Strike three. It's about 400 fans to 100, but 12 to one score. I'll, I'll take that. Absolutely. Jordan Chevery will step in. She made a great catch over in left field last inning. Good line drive hitter, Jordan Chevery. Back to the top of the order after Chevery. Swing and a miss. Looked a little overmatched with that pitch. Ferry reared back for a little extra, extra. Chevery fouls that one away, 0 oh and 2. What do you think about these teams uh, scouting our broadcast to, uh, you know, set up their defense? What do you think about doing that? Well, if I was a coach, I'd do the same thing. Well, we provide entertainment value as well. Swing and a miss, out number two. That'll bring up Emily Whalen, who grounded out in her only plate appearance. Emily Whalen during this season hit a 535. She scored 31 runs, drove in 12. She was a Tri Valley All Star, Emily Whalen was, and heading to the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. And she'll hold up there. That's ball one. She's been fun to watch the last three seasons. Certainly has. The very speedy Emily Whalen. Look at that defense being employed by Bridgewater Raynham with the second baseman. Strike one, says the home plate umpire. Second baseman is playing almost even or diagonal with the pitcher, ready to charge in. The first baseman's going to stay home. The 1-1. One, one. Down low. Two and one. Tara Kester do up. Shall Waylon reach? Barry deals. And this is up the first base side. That's a fair ball, and now it's foul. Two and two. Basically, Ferry's been throwing a steady diet of fastballs. Haven't seen much off-speed stuff, if she has any. Here comes the sun. The 2-2. Two -two. Hit in the air. Is it catchable? Yes, it is. Lexi Silas, the catcher, makes out number three to wrap up the top half of the third to the bottom of the inning we go. Now Hiller's leading one to nothing on H Cam. Bottom of the third inning, Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad at Taunton High School along with Mike DeRosian on camera for this Division I South sectional semifinal between the 13th seeded Hillers and the first seeded Bridgewater Raynham Trojans. Emma Tapley, the designated player in ninth in the batting order, steps in. And first pitch is a strike, 0 and 1. Kylie Piche, the center fielder, and CeCe Barron, the second baseman, do up next. No doubt about that strike call. We're 100 feet away. There's a bond attempt, and there's a strike. 0 and 2. Here 
Get you the numbers on Juliana Cedia, who's pitched very well this season in her freshman year. That pitch just outside, one and two. She got one more year with her sister, who undoubtedly will be playing some college ball. Probably had some sniffs. Juliana set the deal. And there's a bunt right back to the catcher, and that is an out. Why didn't you tell me why? Well, she bunted, and it was actually, I think the catcher caught it before it even hit the ground. So Bunted on two strikes. Kylie Piche, of course. The center fielder will step in. Juliana Cedia this season, a 3.05 ERA. 13 appearances in the pitcher's circle. Four wins, one loss. I don't think that's accurate. I think it's a little more wins than that. But this is a fair ball up the right side, and Waylon didn't have a play on it. A little miscommunication, it looks like, with Odsey. And Piche reaches on the single. CC Barron will step in. Looks like we got fans from as far away as Milford, Massachusetts coming down to enjoy the game. One out, one on. And a runner taking off from first round to second. They got her. What a throw from Jill Cedia. Caught stealing is Kylie Piche. What a gun on Jill Cedia. Well, you try to take off on Jill, that could happen. You know her motto, thou shall not steal. It's in the Bible too. <laughs> Looks like the approach that Bridgewater Raynham has is just to play small ball. Try and bunt and bunt and bunt. They have one base hit. Yo one. Strike two. By 21 and one, I thought they would have a team of mashers. Both pitchers I saw last Sunday, Walpole's pitcher and Stoughton's pitcher were throwing a lot harder than Ferry. This is a bunt, is it fair? Yes, throw to first, not a pro, no, not in time. The runner just beats it out. Maybe a slightest of a stretch by Anzi. Might have got her. I think that she was very fast up the line. Jill Johnson will step in. Jill Johnson had a triple in the first inning. Is it death by a thousand paper cuts with all these bunts? Could be. There's a strike. That base runner ought to mind her manners over there. She could find herself being thrown out. The 0-1. And this is up the first baseline, foul. I thought Odsey was going to make a play on that, Larry. <laughs> Megan Sullivan. It's got to be aware. She doesn't want a ball hit over her head. The 0-2. Hit in the air, right side, and caught by Megan Sullivan for the third and final out of the third inning. To the top of the fourth we go. It's the Hillers leading one to nothing on HCAM. Moving on to the top of the fourth inning. Two, three, and four do up for the Hillers. Tara Kesser, Katie Holly, and Jill Cedia. A one to nothing lead for Hopkinton. They scored back in the second inning. A sacrifice RBI fly up by Alyssa McIntyre. Scored Carly Stevens, who was pinch running for Jillian Cedia after Cedia doubled to start off the second. Tara Kester's been called on the bunt a lot this year with Emily Wayland usually on base. A nice looking swing there, but it's strike one. She had a a bomb this year to right field at Hopkinton. She also hit another one. I guess we didn't have a chance to see. Maybe you covered that game, but she has two home runs on the year. She's got home run power. Ferry set to deal, and the hitter calls time. And gets it. Ferry was ready to deliver. She was pulling a Stevie Simos. She'll get a piece of this one in the air over to right center, ranging to her left and making the catch as Piche, one away. 
It'll bring up Katie Holly. Just peachy. Oh, sorry. Here's the Tri Valley Large MVP. Line up in the pitch. Holly fouls it away. During the season, Katie Holly hit a 620. She scored 32 runs, drove in 34, six doubles, six triples, and a home run to her credit. And 70 steals. She's in an exaggerated crouch at the plate against Ferry. Down low. One and one. She'll be playing some bowl down in uh, Manhattan, the Manhattan College. The lefty steps in. There's a bunt foul. Surprised to see her bunt. Uh, hitting 600. Uh, she didn't get many bunt hits this year. Katie Holly had a 662 on base percentage. 915 slugging. Upstairs. So far it's fastball, fastball, fastball. No wrinkles by Ferry. The 2-2. Two -two. And this is up the middle, picked up by the shortstop. Throw to first, not in time. Holly beats it out. A one-out single for the center fielder. And now you got Jill Cedia coming to the plate. The ever so dangerous one. The walk off woman. Beating the Wildcats to allow us to go home an inning early. Earlier last week. Josiah hit a 569 during the season. Inside runner taking off, throw to second. Safe. Just safe. That was very close, but Holly gets the job done and uh, takes second base with her. Frank Pagano, the uh, base umpire, looks like he had to think about it for a second. But it was a good slide to the out outfield side to second base, so that's what smart ball players do. It's Kitty Holly's 20th stolen base. Okay, I exaggerated a little bit by 50. She's a threat to go. And she's a very, very smart base runner. Jill Cedia, seven doubles and five home runs to her credit heading into this game. Just outside. Two and O. Oh. Katie Hawley can get a good secondary lead over there after the pitch is released, because that's what you can do in softball. You don't have to wait for it to cross the plate. And she'll get a piece of this one over to left field. It goes, and it's caught. Nearly a collision between the outfielders. Holly advances to third, and she's safe. So two outs in the inning. Runner on third, Kristen McCluskey to the plate. That brought the crowd to its feet. They thought that ball had enough legs to get out. But with the wind blowing in, it might get knocked down a little bit. I thought the fielders were going to run right into each other. That would have been all right. That would have been okay, Tom. They've got athletic trainers and medical staff here <laughs> to take care of that situation. That bunt pulled back. Shortstop got caught a little flat-footed there on the bunt attempt. She should have rotated over to third, but I'm sure she realizes that now. The 1-0. Upstairs. McCluskey hit a 434 during the season, scored 16 runs, drove in eight. Three doubles, three triples to her credit. Be nice to slap one by the third baseman here. Inside, 3 and 0. Oh. Definite take situation here. You got Juliana Cedia, a power hitter, waiting on deck. There's a strike. She might even take two. Got fans all around the fences in the outfield. 
Swing and a miss, full count. No take there. Katie Harley gonna get a jump. Ferry delivers. Hit in the air, over to center field, that'll get down, it's two nothing Hillers. An RBI single for Kristen McCluskey. That's gonna rattle the Bridgewater Rainham Trojans. They find themselves down a deuce. Alyssa McIntyre will step in. Job well done by McCluskey. Well, powwow on the mound. I'm sorry, it wasn't Juliana CDL waiting on deck. It was Alyssa McIntyre. Alyssa McIntyre. Allowed the first run to score in this game with a sacrifice fly out to drive in Carly Stevens back in the second. Stevens was pinch running for Julian Cedia who doubled. And now the Hiller is up two to nothing after Kristen McCluskey has a nice piece of hitting to score Katie Holly. If Hopkins can pull this off, I would say that would be a coup d'etat. Popped up, left side, and caught. Nice catch by the third baseman. It's all right. And that'll be the third and final out of the top of the fourth, but the Hillers played another run, and they lead it two to nothing as we head to the bottom of the fourth on H cam. Bottom of the fourth inning, a two to nothing lead for the Hillers. Four, five, and six do up for Bridgewater Raynham. Summer Sheeran, Lexi Silva, and Julia Ferry. Unfortunately, we don't have any stats on the Trojans. We just got names and numbers, that's it. CD is set to deliver. Down low. One and oh. I'm not sure whether this show bunt distraction tactic is working. Hasn't so far. Ball two. Juliana Cedia's dad came by to make sure we got Jill's stats. There's a strike, two and one. I assured him uh, we did. The home run stats anyway. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air over to left field and it's caught by Holly. Automatic Holly. One away, Lexi Silva the catcher will step in. She got a great read on that ball, Tom. She certainly did, but it wasn't enough. Covers a lot of territory, that Katie Holly, MVP of the Tri-Valley. Would have been nice of you to bring a pair of sunglasses for me. Pitch down low. Bridgewater Raynham has a couple of players that are rather short in stature. She'll get a piece of this one, left side and foul. Nice play by that fan over there. One and one. Really proud of the Hopkinton contingent that drove all the way down. The 50 minute drive from Hopkinton to Taunton. Cedia deals, and it's a bunt. Slow roller, picked up by Otzi, throw to first, and they get the out. Three to four on the out. Trojans even have their names on the back of their unis. That says BR. Oh, sorry, I've been corrected. Julia Ferry, the pitcher, will says step BR. in. BR. Bridgewater Rain, uh, thanks, Mike. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Mike Tarosia on camera for Hiller's playoff softball. That pitch up high. I rather like the green and white look. Nice contrast. The 1 0. And this is hit in the air over to center field. No problem for Katie Holly. And that is the third and final out. Of the fourth, we'll head to the top of the fifth. The Hillers leading Bridgewater Raynham two to nothing on HCAM. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers. 
and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Top of the fifth inning, the Hillers leading Bridgewater Raynham two to nothing. Do up for the Hillers seven, eight, and nine. Juliana Cedia, Bella Ansi, and Jordan Chevery. The Hillers scored a run in the second and one in the fourth. Should they win today, they will be playing on Sunday at 1 p.m. Right here at Taunton High School. Oh, gee. Against the winner of Bishop, Fian and Taunton. That game taking place right here after this one. That's fouled away. Oh, and one. I don't know, Juliana have a home run this year? I'm not sure. We, of course, we know Jill did, but. She's done some mashing of her own. She did. She had one, according to the stats. All right, Jill's got bragging rights then at the kitchen table. One and one. Line up and the pitch. Fouled away. The wind kicked up. Hasn't been a factor so far today. It's blowing in. Not going to help Juliana. May help the pitcher, if anybody. Somebody ought to call time with the dust. Ferry delivers upstairs. Ooh. Two and two. Line up and the pitch. Strike three, says the home plate umpire, one away. Bella Ansi, the first baseman, will step in. Two to nothing lead for the Hillers here in the top of the fifth. Bridgewater Raynham is the higher seed, therefore they are the home team. This is hit in the air over to the second baseman and caught. A one pitch out, two away. Jordan Chevery will step in, the left fielder. A lot of noise coming out of that hop in a dugout. Upstairs. There's somebody that's been watching the broadcast uh, gave me a call the other day and said, you must like stairs for some reason. She asked me, <laughs> what's upstairs mean? I have to foul. Fouled away, one and one. I said upstairs means it's out of the strike zone. High, upstairs. <laughs> Really? Yeah. I mean, it was a call out of the blue. We'll have I don't to come know how they my number. Terminology. Yeah, I know. Upstairs. Upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one. Put it at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, we should close caption it. Upstairs. Downstairs. Tom's play by play call terms. Inside, outside. There's the 2 1. Inside. Down low. Downstairs. <laughs> Downstairs. Three and one. Waiting on deck is Megan Sullivan, I think, or Emily Whelan, one of the two. Whelan. Megan Sullivan, the flex today. Called strike. I don't know about that one. No Full doubt count. about that by the umpire. Tartrell. Used to get paid $225 for a doubleheader college softball. And that's foul. Good battle here between Chevery and Ferry. Not bad cake for three hours work. Not at all. Works at one of the supermarket chains. Ferry delivers. And this is up the middle past the dive of the second baseman. And Chevery is going to hold up at first base. It's a two out single. 
Emily Whalen will step in. Well, Hoppingen have decided to bring the bats today. They brought them all postseason long. Yes, they did, especially against the Milton Wildcats. Not Mustangs, Tom. Jordan Chevry got great speed if Emily Whalen could just put it somewhere where they ain't. A little wind here. Pitcher going to take some time to let it die down. It's a little bit of a swirling wind. Now it's blowing a little bit out. The flag is standing still, though. Set to deliver. Ball one. My goodness, I'm going to fly away with this win. Silva threatened to throw behind Chevry. The 1-0. Outside, good eye by Whalen, 2-0. So you see where the defense is aligned. The second base woman, excuse me, C.C. Barron is way in, anticipating a bunt, and the first baseman or base woman is playing where she normally would. And this is a bunt up the left side, and it is foul. Two and one. Our camera has to be adjusted for Emily Whalen's speed. She can get down the line in a hurry. Barry delivers the 2 1. And that was uh, inside, 3 and 1. Well, if Whalen gets on base, it could certainly be a dangerous situation for the Trojans. Tara Kester. Laying in wait. Wind up in the pitch, it's a bunt, fair ball, foul. Full count now. Now she's gonna have to swing away. Or risk bunting foul and being struck out. So far Emily's 0 for 2 today, she's due. She's an impact player for sure. Barry delivers and she'll get a piece of this one up the middle, slow roller, and there will be no play on it. It's a single for Emily Whalen. Everybody's safe. Chevrolet up to second. And Tara Kester will step into the batter's box. Bridgewater Random crowd is uh, in sort of stunned silence here. Find their team down 2 0 in the fifth inning. They haven't done much with their bats. Wind up and the pitch, down low. Wild pitch or pass ball would move the runners up and would put Chevry in scoring position. Nine, 60 feet away, not 90, pardon me. Upstairs, one and one. Catcher really has to climb the ladder or the stairs, those high pitches, she's not that tall. Two on, two outs for the Hillers. Very high, two and one. Way upstairs. It looks like uh, Ferry may be having some control issues. There's a strike. Well, scoreboard says three and one, so we'll go with that. All right, well, Kara Kester's got the upper hand, not only here, but at home, because she got more home runs than her brother. She's got two home runs, her brother Ryan's got none. Playing for the varsity team, he's heading off to Virginia Tech. Be a hokey. Wind up in the pitch, swing and a miss, full count. That's a Kester cut right there. 
Varsity coach Steve Simos out in center field. He used to coach the Hopkins and Hiller softball team. Fouled wow. away. The battle continues. Emily Whalen was three quarters of the way down the second base as the ball was released from Ferry's hand. She can fly. Ferry deals. Upstairs, it's a walk. Bases loaded for the Hillers. And here's who you want. Danger. Katie Danger. Katie Holly will step in. Give her a little respect. She's 1-4-2 today. She's stolen a bag and scored a run. She won't be bunting here. I don't think so. Clear the bases. Big opportunity for the Hillers to break this game open. Oh, another meeting on the mound. Oh, boy. A 2-0 lead for Hopkinton here in the top of the fifth. Base is loaded, but there is two outs. Crowd on their feet behind us. Anticipating something good going to happen here. I'm feeling it. Ferry deals. Holly gets a piece of this one. Hit in the air over to right field and caught. Yeah. Emily Newcomb rushes in to make the catch, and the Hillers leave the bases loaded, but they lead it two to nothing as we head to the bottom of the fifth on H Cam. Bottom of the fifth inning, a two to nothing lead for the Hillers due up for Bridgewater Raynham. is seven, eight, and nine. Emily Newcomb, Riley Srozinski, and Emma Tapley. Juliana Cedia pitching a masterpiece tonight. This is what she wants to get out of the way. Seven, eight, and nine. Wind up and the pitch. Bunt pulled back, ball one. Corners were charging on that play. Emily Whalen rotated over to first base to take the throw. The 1-0. And this is ripped into left center. That'll get down for a hit. Around first goes Newcomb over to second, and she's safe. A stand-up double to start things off here in the bottom of the fifth for the Trojans. Riley Srozinski will step in. Didn't expect that out of the seven hole. Will the eight hitter try and bunt the uh, seven hitter over? I don't know. Strategy time. But Bridgewater Raynham. Now we're going to see a pinch hitter. Looks like we might. So we are going to have a pinch hitter for the Trojans. It'll be Lindsay Shearstone. 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 Lindsay Shearstone steps in. Pinch hitting for Strozinski. She may have a specialty like bunting. Infielders in on the corners. Inside, one and oh. Got a very small strike zone, so Juliana's gonna have to be extra fine. There's some definite life in the BR dugout. And this is up the left side, right to McCluskey, one away. She chopped at that pitch. She had an ax in her hand. Right around her eyes. That was a chop up the left side, if I'll ever say. Emma Tapley will step in. So it's one on, one out for the Trojans. That ball got down to third base in a hurry. Looks like we might have another pinch hitter here. BR going to empty their bench, put up a, another pinch hitter. It's going to be Jenna Merlino.
So Jenna Merlino steps in for Emma Tapley. She's the right fielder, Merlino, right? No. The third base woman. I don't know what the conversation was over by the Bridgewater Raynham dugout. No pinch hitter. There's a strike. So since they're using their third baseman as the pinch hitter, Bridgewater Raynham loses the designated player spot. Swing and a miss, 0 oh and 2. Oh, she looked bad on that one. I'm sorry, Bridgewater Raynham fan. She looked really bad. It's like she jumped at the ball. One out, one on. Bunt, fair ball. Picked up by Anzi, throw to first, not in time. Everybody's safe. First and third with one out. That'll bring up Kylie Piche, the center fielder. All right, they're gonna have a meeting, the Cedia sisters. Well, tough play to make there. And a good bunt for the Trojans. So if Marlino takes off, will Jill Cedia throw down to second base or they let her go? That's the discussion. Cedia deals. And it's another bunt up the middle. Otzi picks it up, throws the third. And did not get her. Everybody's safe. She tried to throw to third. She had an easy play at first. I don't know what she was thinking there. CeCe Barron will step in. Bases loaded, one out. Huge opportunity here for Bridgewater Raynham. Could that decision by Ansi be what allows the Trojans back in this game? Fouled away. This is what good pitchers are made of is get themselves out of trouble. She is in trouble. Looks like Charlotte Can is going to start to warm up. Just in case, Cedia. Continues to run into trouble here. Fouled away, 0 and 2. Strikeout would be lovely here. Hopkins in infield playing in. Going to throw to the plate if it comes right at him. And this is a fair ball up the right side. And now it's foul, 0 and 2. Good thing that was foul. You gotta know what to do, Think, be thinking, what do I do if the ball comes? Can't wait for the umpire to say fair foul. Just throw it home. Get the out. They say foul, fine. Strike Swing three. and a miss, Great. out number two. That's Stones right there. A K. Jill Johnson stepping in for Bridgewater Raynham. She's 1-4-2 today with a triple. And she's also flown out to right field. Bases loaded for Bridgewater Raynham, but now there's two outs. Outfield's gonna play deep. Two nothing lead for the Hillers, and the outfield did back up. Outside. They can't afford to have a ball go over their head, the outfielders. And she's shown she can do it. Cedia delivers. There's a strike, one and one. If Cedia can get out of this inning, it will suck the life out of the Bridgewater Rain and fans. 
They got EMTs around here. And this is up the middle, off the glove of Waylon, and everybody's going to be safe. A second run being waved around to throw home is off the mark. It's a two to two game. A two RBI single from Jill Johnson, and we are knotted up here in Totten. Piche advances all the way to third. Summer Shearer in the shortstop st set to step in. 0-0 zero, zero game here. Cedia finds herself with runners at first and third with two out. Will the runner Johnson take off for second base? We'll see to you throw through. Hit in the air, left side, and it is caught. Jordan Chevery makes the catch for the third out of the inning, but Bridgewater Raynham plates two runs, and we are knotted up at two apiece as we head to the top of the six on each camp. Top of the sixth inning, we are tied up at two apiece. Coming up for the Hillers, four, five, and six, Jill Cedia, Kristen McCluskey, Alyssa McIntyre. Bridgewater Raynham plates two runs in the bottom of the fifth to make it an even game. Ferry deals, there's a strike. CD had that smash earlier in the game to the left center field gap. CD having a good day at the plate, one for one with a sacrifice RBI flyout. She's also scored a run. She'll get a piece of this one up the left side, and it's foul. Oh, and two. Time called by the hitter, and now she's ready. Ferry's got anything in her bag of tricks. I suggest she uses it now. Inside. One and two. Nothing but heaters. Jillia timer up. Let one rip. And this is a slow roller up the middle, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, no problem. Four to three for out number one. Kristen McCluskey, the third baseman, will step in. She had a sacrifice ground out and an RBI single. Ferry takes a long look in, now deals. Up high. That was upstairs. <laughs> Two flights. <laughs> the uh, crowd for the game number two is starting to trickle in. Wind up and the pitch. Bunt pulled back. Ball strike. One and one. And there's a bunt up the right side, picked up, easy out. Four to three on the out, two away. Alyssa McIntyre to the plate. I don't know, Larry, uh, would you try to bunt in that situation? Uh, it's only gonna get you a base. and make something happen. Bridgewater outfield playing very deep for Alyssa McIntyre. Outside. 
Center fielder close to about 180 feet away. 1-0. Gets a piece of this one, foul. One and one. Doesn't seem like Alyssa is overmatched by Ferry. Inside. I think that was her first off-speed pitch she's thrown all game. McIntyre reaches Juliana Cedia due up next. Very high, three and one. Alyssa McIntyre looking down third base to get the sign. Coach Alberry. And this is a chip shot foul. Full count. Q shot. A lot of English on that one. Barry set to deliver. McIntyre gets a piece of this one. It's a fair ball caught by the shortstop for out number three. One, two, three, they go. We'll head to the bottom of the six. We are knotted up at two apiece on HCAM. Top of the sixth inning. Due up for Bridgewater Raynham is five, six, and seven. Lexi Silva, Julia Ferry, and Emily Newcomb. Bridgewater Raynham tied the game up back in the bottom of the fifth. Line up and the pitch outside. The inning started off with a double from Emily Newcomb and then a fly out followed by a single by the pinch hitter, Jenna Marino. And then uh, Kylie Pichet came in to load up the bases by hitting a single as that's fouled away. Then a strikeout for out number two, and then a two RBI single for Jill Johnson to tie this game up. Bridgewater Rainham, the home team, they have the last say at the plate. Bottom of the sixth. The 1-1, one, one. up high. Upstairs, three and one. Well, CD has had to throw a good amount of pitches the last couple of innings. She was rolling right along earlier in the game. Swing and a miss, full count. Julia Ferry, the pitcher, due up next. Silva. Stepped out of the box, shaking her head. Mad at herself for swinging at that pitch. And this is hit in the air, foul out of play. Good little catcher, this kid. And there's a walk. Julia Ferry will step in. We're gonna have a pinch runner here for Bridgewater Raynham. They've got a long bench, so they may have some specialists. Victoria Quill in the pinch run. She may be her, their designated runner. But Jill Seedy's got that cannon. Squared bunt, fair ball, picked up by Otzi, throw to first, and it's dropped by Willie, and it was a low throw. Everybody's safe. Give Otzi the error on that one. And that'll bring up Emily Newcomb. 
Well, Ozzy has certainly been a bit shaky in the field today. A couple of mishaps and slow reactions in the last inning, and now an error. And the game leading run is at second base with no outs. Fairly routine play on that last one. Now the Hillers find themselves in trouble. Two on, nobody out. A bunt successful here will move the runners to second and third. There's a bunt picked up by Otzi. Throw to first. They'll get her this time, but the runners advance. One Wind. away, runners on second and third. Wind is really whipping up now. <laughs> Riley Srozinski do up next. Who do the Hillers have up in their top of the seventh? Bottom of the order. One and oh. Hit in the air, caught by Whalen. Everyone stays put, two away. Big out there. That'll bring up Emma Tapley. Actually, I believe Jenna Marino, since they lose the designated player spot. So it'll be Jenna Marino, the third baseman, stepping in. Two on, two outs. Two runners in scoring position. Inside. Down low. Job, Two and oh. First base is open. I was just going to mention, she might want to work around this hitter, put a force play in all the way around. Fouled away. Two and one. Top of the order, due up next. Shall Marino reach? That batter's box is carved up pretty good. You can't even see where the batter's box was. You're not allowed to hit the ball if you're out of the batter's box. Inside, three and one. CD is set to deal. Fouled away, full count. One strike away from getting out of a jam. Up the middle, picked up by Otzi, throw to first, they get the out. Three to four for out number three and despite Two reaching, the game remains tied as no run score in the bottom of the sixth to the top of the seventh we go. It's two to two here on HCAM. Top of the seventh inning, Hopkinton two, Bridgewater Raynham two. Juliana Cedia set to step to the plate. Julia Ferry has pitched a good game for Bridgewater Raynham. It's been all right. I mean, I thought she would be way more overpowering than she was. Gave up one run in the second, one in the fourth. And the Hillers could use a run this inning. Wind up and the pitch, fouled away. Juliana has struck out both of her plate appearances. Didn't get cheated on that swing. She let it go. She's got all the incentive to get a hit here. Outside, one and one. Her and Charlotte can pitch for club in Concord, 
play club ball. Added to the regular season. Upstairs, little sp speed there. Looks nice and relaxed at the plate. The 2-1, fouled away. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call for the sectional semifinals matchup. Mike Terosian on camera. That pitch outside, full count. Good take. Catcher looking down to the uh, first base umpire, Pagano. That call was made by the home plate umpire, Tatrell. We're knotted up at two. Swing and a miss, out number one. Bella Ansi, the first baseman, will step in. She's had a hit today, right? Nope. 0 for 2. Struck out and flown out. Swing and a miss. A late swing there. Go one, up high. I don't think I've ever seen a catcher this small. Nothing against short, but makes a difficult target. Swing and a miss. Looks like Ferry just has Ansi fooled in this game so far. He's got to start a swing a little bit earlier. The one, two, fouled away. Barry set to deal. Upstairs, two and two. One out in the inning. Bases are clear. Hillers and Bridgewater Raynham nodded at two apiece. And we're in the top of the seventh. Monty would like nothing better than a poke one. Strike three. Not Says happening on this at bat. I did think that was a tad low. Jordan Chevery will step in. Chevery's one for two today. Singled in the fifth. And couldn't hold up there. Oh and one. Excuse me, swing by Chevery. But she can hit the ball. She turns the lineup over to Emily Whalen. Things can happen. Outside. One and one. And she'll get a piece of this one over to right field. It goes, and it drops in front of the reach of the right fielder. A two-out single for Chevery. Emily Whalen set to come up to the plate. Chevery can run, too. Let's see how much risk Coach Albury wants to take. Katie Hawley has already stolen a base. Second baseman playing very in again. Up high. Silva pulled that ball back behind the plate like she was going to throw down to first. First base, first baseman playing way off the bag.
And this is a bunt up the middle, throw to first, not a problem. That'll be out number three. Here in the top of the seventh, we are tied up at two apiece, heading to the bottom of the inning on H camp. Bottom of the seventh inning, we're tied up at two apiece. Top of the order for the Trojans of Bridgewater Raynham. Kylie Pichet, the center fielder. CeCe Barron, the second baseman. Jill Johnson, the left fielder. The Trojans with a chance to walk off here in this sectional semifinals game if they could play to run. McCluskey's got to play in on the corner and charge that ball just in case it's a bunt. That pitch down low. Doesn't appear that she was bunting on that. She was looking to slap hit it. 1-0. Outside. 2-0. Well, CD got out of a bit of a jam last inning as the first two hitters reached. And we're in scoring position, but no runs. Two and one is the count. Last thing she wants to do is issue free passes. Make them earn it if they're going to win it. Fouled away, two and two. Again, for a team that's 21 and one, they just don't have the mashers. Just punch and Judy hitters. Set to deliver. There's a bunt pulled back that'll fill up the count. CD deals. There's a bunt, fair ball, picked up by Otzi. Throw to first, not a problem. One away. Three to four on the out. CC Barron will step in. Well, Bridgewater Raynham really uh, trying to test the Hillers' bunt defense, especially with some of the struggles they had back in the fifth. Hopkins and Hiller's got to play no doubles defense. They can't afford to let a ball go to the gap or over their head. Down low. Barron is 1-4-3 today. She's flown out, singled, and struck out. Megan, Megan Sullivan's a little bit. Up the left side, fair ball, picked up, throw to first in time. Five to three for out number two. I like the way that Frank Pagano makes that out call. It's good stuff, good stuff. Jill Johnson, the left fielder, will step in. She's been big trouble today for the Hillers. Tripled in the first, flew out in the third, and a two RBI single in the fifth to tie this game up at two apiece. There's a strike. Sullivan's a little bit too shallow for my liking to step or two back. I'll be happy with it. I'd hate to see a ball go overhead, especially with two out. Watch out. Whoa, right towards us. Oh, and two. <laughs> I would have I would have stuck my paw out for you. For Mike, I wouldn't have wouldn't we're going to have to sacrifice Mike for a minute. <laughs> two strikes on the hitter. One strike away from getting out of this. And this is up the middle and caught right to Alyssa McIntyre. It goes for the third out of the seventh. We are heading to extra innings. It's the Hillers to Bridgewater Raynham 2. It's Hillers playoff softball on HCAM. Top of the eighth inning, two, three, and four do up for the Hillers. Tara Kester, Katie Holly, and Jill Cedia. We're tied up at two apiece in this sectional semifinals matchup between Hopkinton and Bridgewater Raynham. The Hiller is the 13th seed, Bridgewater Raynham the first. And the first pitch to Kester is fouled away. No sign of bunting there. I don't think the Hopkinton and Hiller's girls softball team has ever been this deep. I may be wrong. Well, they've had a lot of great teams in the past few years, but this year is certainly among the best. 
Last Barry year they were eliminated by King Philip. Down low. One and one. Outside. Good take. The Bridgewater Raynham outfielders are playing so deep they can almost shake hands with the fans out there. Left fielder especially. The 2-1. Upstairs. Counts in Kester's favor. Only if she likes it. 3-1 pitch. And therefore a strike. Full count now. Tara Kester, Katie Holly, Jill Seedy of this inning. The sun is a factor for the right field as she's shading her eyes with her hand. She doesn't have any sunglasses. And this is up the middle, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, one away. Katie Holly, the center fielder, will step in. No problem with the sun in left or in center. Very strong in right field. Well, Bridgewater Raynham went nine innings last round with North Attleboro, and they came out with the 1-0 victory. Extra innings once again for them, as this is driven into right field and caught by a sliding Emily Newcomb. Right on the screws. Couldn't hit that ball any better. We have some heroics with Jill Cedia here? Perhaps. Jill Cedia stepping in. She is one for two today. She's doubled, had a sacrifice RBI fly out, and scored a run. Let me state the obvious. She's not bunting. Down low. Sure, Ferry's going to be careful with Cedia. She knows what's good for her. Inside. Two and O. Swing and a miss. Two and one. That was their second off speed pitch and a perfect time to do it. Time called by Cedia. Bases are clear, two outs in the inning. Two to two here in the top of the eighth. Swing and a miss, two and two. Cut her twice in a row with the off-speed stuff. Cedia reaches, Kristen McCluskey to up next. Will she throw three change-ups in a row? Inside, full count. Good take by Cedia, she draws the walk. And out from the dugout will be Carly Stevens to pinch run. I bet. We will have a pinch runner. Stevens is in. Kristen McCluskey to the plate. McCluskey is one for two today with a sacrifice ground out and an RBI single.
Coach Alberry going to send Stevens to get her in scoring position. Down low. Nice play behind the plate by Silva. Keep it in front of her. Inside strike call. One and one. Down low, two and one. The entire Bishop, Bishop Fian team is out in left field waiting to get on. Well, they're certainly gonna have to wait a little longer. They'll have to wait for as long as this one takes. The two one, fouled away. Two and two. Runner on first, two outs for the Hillers here in the top of the eighth. Game tied at two. And this is up the right side. That'll trickle into right field. Stevens will stay put at second. A single for McCluskey. And now Alyssa McIntyre, the shortstop, stepping in. Two on, two outs. McIntyre had a sacrifice RBI in the second inning. Has not had a base hit yet today. There's a strike. Alyssa McIntyre looking down at Coach Alberry for the sign. She's going to take the pitch, swing away. She gets a piece of this one up the left side, and the third baseman will just step on the third base bag for the force out. And that'll wrap up the top of the eighth inning. We will head to the bottom of the eighth. It's Bridgewater Raynham 2, Hopkinton 2. You are tuned in to the sectional semifinals on each camp. Bottom of the eighth inning. Bridgewater Raynham 2, Hopkinton 2. The Trojans coming up to the plate with their four, five, and six hitters. Summer Sheeran, Lexi Silva, Julia Ferry do up. And we are set to go. Cedia delivers. There's a strike. She's already ahead. Hopkins came in as the number 13 seed, and they're playing the top seed in this section. No matter what happens here, it's certainly an unbelievable run for the Hillers. Fouled away. Bridgewater Raynham is in Division I. They've got about 2,700 students compared to Hopkins' 1,100. Well, Hopkinton is playing up. Here comes the 0-2. Fouled away. Just got a piece of that one. People crawl on all over this place, Tom. Certainly is. Starting to encroach on our uh, broadcasting. Bunt is laid down, pulled back, swing, up the left side, foul. Count remains 0 and 2. Sun only a factor in right field. The winner of this game advances to take on the winner of Taunton and Bishop Fee in that game happening next right here at Taunton High School. Ball one. I question whether that bunt was back in time. Uh, no appeal. Hit in the air, left side, and McCluskey can't get to it. The third base coach standing in her way, non-intentional. Coach's interference, anybody? There is a coach's interference.
And this is ripped into left field. It'll get down for a hit. A single for the cleanup hitter. Now Lexi Silva, the catcher, will step in. Well, Hopkinton can even out this situation. They've got a catcher that can throw any runner out. But they may have the bump play on. Ball one. Emily Whalen rotated over to first base and Megan Sullivan was backing up just in case Jill Cedia threw it past Whalen. Ball two. Juliana's just gonna focus on the task at hand, not worry about that runner. Let her sister take care of her. Up high, three and oh. Now she's got a work cut out for her. There's a strike. Three and one. Runner on first, no outs for Bridgewater Raynham. The Hillers have had their hearts broken at Taunton High School two of the last three years. That pitch is outside, outside. that's ball four. Two on, no outs. This is where Coach Albury should probably pop out and have a quick discussion, but she's letting the girls alone. What are they gonna do if they lay down a bunt? How are they gonna play it? Pinch, We're gonna pinch have a runner. pinch runner. Coming into the game to pinch run for Bridgewater Raynham is Victoria Quill. I think if you're Hopkinton, if they lay down a bunt, you just gotta go for the out. Worry about the open base. There's a strike. Two on, no outs. 0 oh and one count. Alyssa McIntyre flashing over to third base, covering for the charging McCluskey. There's a bunt, fair ball, picked up by Odsey, throw to third, not in time. Everybody's safe. Bases loaded, no outs. Well, Ansi certainly not quick on her feet there. Probably should have went to first base, got the out. She had the out at first. Now the Hillers find them in a big pickle. Pinch runner for Bridgewater Raynham. Kaylee Metis in there to pinch run. A fly ball will do it for Bridgewater Raynham. A squeeze play, successful will do it. The infield is playing all the way in, all the way around to cut the runner off at the plate. Onzi is in, Whalen is in, McIntyre is in, McCluskey is in. They have to cut that runner down at the plate. No choice or catch a line drive. Inside, no strike one rather. The outfield is in. They're in as far as they can throw it to the plate should they catch it in the air. One and one. Nice pitch by Cedia. Just missed. 
You can feel the tension in the air. Outside. A walk would win the game for Bridgewater Raynham. Two and one count. Pressure is certainly on the Hillers. And this is hit in the air over to right field. Caught. And the throw home. And she didn't even go. Got away from the catcher. And now they're going to score. The runner did not even go. And an errant throw by Megan Sullivan ends the Hillers' season. Bridgewater Raynham walks away with the three to two win. Was there a hole in that fence? Well, that's a tough loss to take if you're the Hillers, but what a great run it's been, Larry. Oh, it was a great run. It's, they went deep. They're playing the number one team in the section. Well, that's it was certainly a lot of fun to follow, a heartbreaking ending, but Bridgewater Raynham defeats the Hillers 3-2 to two to advance on to the sectional championship. Congratulations to the Hopkinton Hillers on a tremendous run, a great season. It was certainly a lot of fun to follow this team this year. The final score for the final time, Bridgewater Raynham three, the Hopkinton Hillers two. The Hillers fall just short here today at Taunton High School. Hillers end their season with a record of 16 wins and seven losses. Bridgewater Raynham now 22 wins and one loss on the year as the Hillers will run up to thank the fans. And certainly a tough loss to take, but what a tremendous season and a tremendous playoff run they had. It has been unbelievable to follow this team. For Mike Terosian on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for tuning in to Hopkinton Hillers softball all season long. Thanks everybody for joining us, and we'll catch you again very soon for Hillers baseball. And of course, we'll be back next season for more Hillers softball coverage. From all of us at HCAM, thanks for watching. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.